Um, so hopefully this is going to work now. Yay, it's working. Quit your job. Um, I'm going to stay down here as well because I have notes to refer to. Uh, but yeah, um, just in case this title card doesn't make it clear, um, I should note that these thoughts are my own and not necessarily the thoughts of my employer um, or my previous employers. Uh, but yeah, it's just, a, just an idea that I, I kind of came up with actually at a Mac admins uh, meetup that was happening in Melbourne a little while ago. And it was, there was a presentation from Melbourne University. Is anyone here from Melbourne University? Today, no, unfortunately, what a bummer. Um, but yeah, they gave this incredible presentation of some of the stuff they were doing out there. Uh, and I was super, super jealous. First of all, because I didn't know how to do any of the stuff they were talking about. But second of all, it, it was just really awesome stuff. And I, I kind of thought, man, I wish I could, you know, I, I wish I could see how they put that together. Um, and we chatted afterwards and I don't know, um, hopefully, hopefully one day we might be able to share some of that knowledge. But it kind of got me thinking about quitting your job and moving on and finding new places to work. And I've worked in IT for just over 10 years. Um, and in that time, I would, you know, to, to be very simple about the whole thing, in that time I've met two types of people. Um, and that would be the people that, say, when I met the drinks last night or the dinner last night, and I chatted to them and I said, hey, are you still at Blah? And they'd be like, no, nah, man, I, no, I moved on like a couple of months ago. I've, I've started this new gig at wherever, and it's fantastic, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm playing with all these new tools, and it's really, really fun. And then the other type of people that I tend to meet, and they seem to be way more, uh, in education especially, they seem to be far more of these types of people, <laughs> uh, are the people who, when I say, hey, are you, where are you these days? They're like, yeah, I'm still at so-and-so university. Yeah, been here for 10 years now, 12 years now, 14 years now. Which is cool. Like, I mean, job security is fantastic. If you can get that, that's fantastic. I'm not really, I don't know. I'm, I don't necessarily think job security even exists anymore, which is a bit of a bummer. But it's, it's great if you've got that. If you've got that in your environment, that's fantastic. And if you're really learning all the time in your environment, then that's great too. Like, and if you've got supportive people around you, fantastic. Um, then, you know. Stick with your job. That's great. I'm not saying that you know you should leave straight away, but I'm just saying that I tend to be the kind of person that hangs around in a job way longer than I should. Um, and so it's ironic that I'm giving this talk because I'm definitely in that second camp of the people who, you know, I've I've learned everything I could from an environment. Um, I've not felt that I'm getting the um, anything new to kind of keep me interested and engaged, and yet I still stick around. I've got, I've got kind of a weird mix of uh, Protestant work ethic and Catholic guilt, and it doesn't really kind of work together. <laughs> so I stick around way longer than I need to, and you know, I generally find that I'm not really happy when I do that, but I still do it anyway. So if that's you right now, um, I would just Say, maybe take this on board. Um, maybe think about looking around. And uh, seriously, the, if, I, if I talked to you last year at one of the dinners or drinks or whatever, and I said, hey, hey, how's, how's things that, let's, uh, I should have made up random university. Someone give me a random. Scumbag University. Scumbag university, excellent. Yeah, how, how are things, that, that's brilliant. How are things going at Scumbag University? That was our trivia name, actually. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, how are things going at Scumbag University? And you say, oh, you know, well, we're going through a restructure at the moment. It's, you know, morale's pretty low and, like, you know, my boss is a jerk and blah, blah, blah. And, and then I speak to you uh, this year and you say the same thing. I really don't want you to say it again next year, you know? Like, if, if, and on that point, actually, how the hell do restructures at universities take that long? Like, I, my child has learnt to walk and talk in the time that my previous employer 
started its restructure and they haven't finished it yet. Like, that is nuts. But anyway, that's one of the reasons why I no longer work with them. Fantastic place. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but um, I'm kind of happy that I'm no longer there. Um, but yeah, so they're the kind of people I tend to talk to. And I've found that the ones who kind of do move on and seem to have a new gig every, every year that I see them at this, this kind of event or other events like this, they seem to be a lot happier than the ones who um, are in the same gig forever. And like, like I said, I'm the worst person at this. It's ridiculous I'm giving you this talk right now because I stick around forever. But uh, earlier last year, my wife decided that we were moving to Melbourne. Um, and she became pretty kind of obsessed with the idea. Uh, she really wanted us to raise our, our child in Melbourne. Um, and she made a very compelling case. And when she has her mindset on something, I pretty much just go along with it. Um, she's, very, she's much smarter than I am, and um, it generally works out. So she said that we were going to move to Melbourne, and I freaked out because I knew that that meant I would have to start looking for a gig. And I really like working in education. Like, I know there are some kind of bad stereotypes about education. I'm looking at Marcus, he's laughing. Um, yeah. <laughs> There, there are some things that, you know, education isn't perfect as a sector to work in, but it is really, really good, I personally think. And, you know, I've got a lot of extra curricular activities that I think a lot of big corporates might freak out about. As Marcus said, I do write for the paper. And so, you know, I, I can't imagine, say, getting a job at NAB and one Friday afternoon writing that, hey, Microsoft did this new thing and it sucks and I hate them, and then coming to work on the next day and being like, hey, yeah. How are we? How's that Microsoft deal going? Um, so <laughs> the universities I've worked with have generally been a little bit more cool about that because you know they work with academics and academics are given that freedom to go out and talk to the media and 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 it's it's kind of built into a university. It's very very hard still. There's a point to this slide. I'm getting to it. Um, uh, yeah, it's still very hard and it's still a conversation I've had to have with my, my new employer. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, it's a much easier conversation, I would imagine, uh, than a conversation I might have with a bank or someone else. Um, but yeah, so the point is, of that slide, is I thought about it and I thought, well, okay, so there's, there's four universities in Melbourne, and there's generally one Mac admin per university. So if I do the math, that's four jobs possibly in the new city I'm moving to. Um, that's going to be really bloody hard uh, to, to find a gig um, in a city of about four to five million people, depending on what, how you draw the numbers. But I had one big advantage, I think, um, and that's the fact that um, over the last, I, I was with my old gig for about five years, almost five years. And in that time, um, just for, my own entertainment, when I, I kept a bunch of uh, saved searches in Seek. And I would apply for these ridiculous jobs that I would never get. Um, you can see I've applied for the Sydney Swans at one point, not, obviously not to play for them. Um, but they, they had a really cool, <laughs> um, really cool gig going one time. I thought that was awesome. Um, I've, I've applied for like the ABC, things like that, just, just cool sounding gigs. Um, and, you know, I've gotten a couple of callbacks. I got a weird, really weird interview with Facebook one time that was bizarre. Um, and about three minutes in, we both understood that we weren't going to fit together. <laughs> and that was hilarious. Um, and then we just went through the motions for the next 40 minutes. That was, that was a fa fascinating morning. But, um, yeah, so I, I've kind of kept myself uh, in the market. Um, and... Even though, I've, yeah, I've, I've, even though I was at my old gig for five years, I was just constantly redoing my CV and making sure that it was kind of up to date. And it's a good thing to do because it, you know, when you look back and try to think of like, what were some of the achievements we've done over the last year? Or you know, when you're starting to look for something new, it's really hard to kind of remember some of that stuff. But if you're constantly kind of updating your CV, then it's always there and it's always easier to kind of like tweak as you go along. And you know, they say that, God, that's low res. Mm. Anyway, they say that um, 
you know, you should never go shopping when you're hungry, that you'll make very, very bad decisions and you'll buy a lot of crap um, that's probably not good for you. Um, and I think the same is true for writing a CV. Um, you don't want to be writing your CV when you're depressed um, and desperate for a, for a job. You know, writing a CV is the worst, I think. I mean, I just can't stand doing it. It's, um, and a cover, le cover letter as well. It's such a painful process, at least for me, to sit down and go, yeah, I'm awesome, and this is why I'm awesome, and I've done awesome things. It's just, it's not something I like to do. And so, to do it when you're actually feeling a bit kind of positive, you've just smashed out some pro project that um, you, know, you didn't think would get over the line and then it did, um, you know, that's a really great time to sit down and go, yeah, man, I'm going to bang out a really good positive CV of, of, about an accomplishment I have. Rather than, Christ, we're into seven, you know, week 17 of this restructure and um, I'm pretty sure our, our area is getting cut. I better start writing one now. And um, does anyone get this reference, by the way? It's, yeah? I'm trying to yeah, 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 but what, I mean, it's very hard to tell from that screenshot, but basically this is uh, him mentioning Get Confident, Stupid, um, one of his self-help books. Um, so, yeah. I guarantee if you are in the audience today, you're probably better um, at your job than I am. Um, you're probably way smarter uh, than I am. And if I can get a job, if I can get a new job, then you can too. Um, if you went to Tony's bash workshop on Wednesday and understood anything past the third slide, you are way better at your job than I am. Like, I had no idea. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, you know, I studied theater and film. And I dropped out. So you are way more qualified than I will ever be. And so I, I realized this was going to be a bit of an issue kind of looking for a gig uh, in Melbourne. Like I said, probably only going to be about four universities, which means four Mac admin jobs going. And we, we kind of had an idea in, in when we were going to move down. It was supposed to be in February this year. Um, and so like November last year, I thought, well, I better start putting some search searches into Seek. And so I did that. And of course, I, I put in a whole bunch of different ones. But then one I thought, well, you know, just for, just for giggles, I'll stick in Mac admin at a university, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, and thought, there's no way that's going to actually come up. And it bloody did. Like, the, the, the one of the four jobs in the city was there. And the, uh, the applications closed like two days from when I saw it. But thankfully, because I had been keeping my CV up to date and all of that other stuff, I kind of felt like I could quickly do it. So I opened up one of my CVs that was closest to uh, what I think Swinburne wanted. And of course, if you've ever applied for a gig at a university, there's also like 17 pages of like other things you have to, criteria, selection criteria that you have to talk about as well. And, you know, I actually helped a friend of mine apply for the gig as well because he was just freaked out about, oh my God, how do you, like, how are you supposed to answer all of these questions, all of these, this criteria? Um, having been in a university and having to actually apply for my own job a couple of times because that's the beauty of working at a university sometimes, um, I was actually pretty good at that. And so, you know, like, to be fair, um, and my boss is going to see this one day. <laughs> so basically, I just opened up one of those ones and you know, found all University of New South Wales re replace all Swinburne University. And I got a call back, which was pretty cool. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, and so yeah, then suddenly I had to go, oh, well, crap, I guess I have to fly down for the interview. And I wasn't feeling super confident for the interview, interview process. Um, and when we first got in there, like the very first question was a technical question. And as I've said many times, and I know some people are probably thinking, oh, no, I'm sure he knows what he's, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I had not, I mean, I've never really been a Mac admin. I, I, I was back in 10, uh, 10 six days. I, I, so, you know, I, I'm pretty sure, I was pretty sure that like work group manager and stuff didn't exist anymore. 
but I wasn't 100% sure. Anyway, I get to this meeting, I get to this interview, and the very first question is this technical question. And it was, uh, okay, the JSS goes down, what do you do? And I had no idea. Um, now, I've hung around with you guys long enough that when something like that comes up, someone says, oh, you know, it's always DNS. And, <laughs> and then I've seen an, enough of you nod and go, yeah, it's always DNS. So I said, well, it's always DNS. And, um, and everyone on the panel went, hey, yes. Always. <laughs> so that was really good, right? And I thought, yeah, nailing it. Um, and then I knew that there was something about Tomcats, but I wasn't in sure, like, I wasn't 100% sure what the hell that was. So I thought, well, I'm not going to say that. So I just, I ended up being super honest, and I just said, look, I am going to be the least technical person that applies for this gig, um, but I promise you that I'll care about the end users and the experience of the end users, and that's what I'm going to focus on. And um, I assume, you know, uh, you're, you've, you've been, Using these tools for a couple of years, I assume it's going to be a fairly stable environment, and I can't wait to learn from your environment. And so that's the way I kind of pitched it. And you know, no one was more surprised than me when I got a call back the next day saying, "Cool, you got the job. When can you come down?" So that was really interesting. Um, and I really, really, you know, I am super grateful for the people who were in that room who decided to say, "Yep, you know, why not?" Um, but I think, you know, one of the, the keys here as well is that, you know, nobody knows anything at the moment. Like, the, the Mac admin game has changed so much and continues to change so much um, that really no one, you know, you can have a hell of a lot of experience. Like, like I said, I did do uh, sysadmin back in the 10.6 days. None of that is relevant anymore. So, you know, some of that you know, some of, some of that knowledge, I mean, I have to believe this, that um, you don't need necessarily all of that knowledge. You can kind of wing it on the job. Because, um, you know, you know more than I do. But, um, you know, I, I do believe that, 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 that the game changes so often that um, we're all learning every day. We're all learning. And, you know, so I'm, I'm interested that uh, the question continues to be asked, is imaging dead? Um, I mean, God bless you, like, if, <laughs> if you continue to ask that question, because it is a scary new world that we're in, you know? Like, most of us, I would say, have moved on to the brave new world of DEP, and we know it's probably not quite ready yet. It's not as mature as we'd like it to be, um, but we know it's the future, and we know we better bloody embrace it, um, because fighting with Apple is never really a good thing. Uh, for your mental health, if nothing else. And then there's the guys, the other people in the room who are just dragging imaging around and <laughs> pretending it's not dead. And, you know, respect to you as well. Like, I, I can completely understand where you're coming from. Um, but, yeah, I, I, prefer, I prefer to kind of embrace um, what, is, what is obviously the future. So, anyway, the new gig. Um, I've got to say, I've really enjoyed it. It's been really, really fun. I've got a fantastic new team. Um, it's really lovely at, at Swinburne. And I think there's something to be said for, um, you know, my previous gig was with the group of eight universities. And so they're very, very, uh, um, very big and very much caring about their reputation. And, and not that Swinburne doesn't, obviously, but um, I think that there's something a little bit more nimble in, in being in a smaller, younger, University and it's, and that that has been lovely to see. It's just so nice to to have something refreshing like that. Um, you know, agile, I guess, as the kids like to say. Um, and you know, for the most part, it's the same stuff. Like they've got the same stuff over there that they've got over here. It's just a little bit different. So it's been kind of fun. And I found it really fun as well to just kind of go through um, the JSS and all the different servers that we have and. And just try to kind of work it out, like how you know how things have, have evolved into where they are today, and and it's been a, a lot of fun, kind of you know peeling through um, different scripts and saying, oh okay, oh that's really really elegant. Like there are some some things that we do at Swinburne that we didn't do um, at my old gig, 
that are just super, super elegant, really clever solutions um, that I would never have thought of. Um, and yeah, that's been really, really fun to see as well. There are some things that aren't as elegant, but we'll get to those, you know, eventually. I won't talk about them here today, but we'll get to them as a team, I'm sure. Um, and because, you know, I didn't bring any of that baggage in of like, this is how things should be done, because this is how we've always done them. Um, I think, you know, it's been fun. I've been able to kind of see, okay, so here is, here is the thing I want to solve. Um, I know nothing about how to solve it, so I'm going to spend the next week researching how everyone else does it, and from there, figure out which of those methods I think is the most elegant and gets out of the way of the user as much as possible, or whatever it is. And um, because it's all new to me, um, I've been documenting everything, um, which is great too. Uh, first of all, it's been nice for, you know, we, like every university or probably every organization, um, you know, there's this big push to kind of get our documentation done properly. Um, and because it's all new to me, I, I'm just doing it anyway, just, just for my own knowledge. Um, you, it's really funny when you get to a new joint how, how much kind of assumed knowledge there is. Like, we get tickets that will come through that'll say, push Rhino to lab AMDC 304. And that's the entire ticket. And it's like, well, is that a Mac lab or is that a PC lab? And like, the three other guys I work with are all like, yeah, it's a PC lab. Like, of course, it's a PC, AMDC. Like, why would it be a Mac lab? Like, that's the kind of stuff that, like, no one even thinks needs to be documented. So, um, so I've now got on the wiki every single Mac lab listed, so I can just quickly look at them and go, ah, oh, I can ignore that ticket. Fantastic. Um, and one other cool thing that I had no idea about when uh, you switch between universities, and they've got to tell you this, man, but uh, you can actually take all your long service leave and everything else. It all just kind of comes across when you, when you switch universities. That's fantastic. Um, so yeah, I've been able to keep all my long service leave. Um, I've never made it in a job long enough to get long service leave, so I'm quite happy about that. Maybe one day I'll actually do it. Um, so anyway, that's awesome too. Um, and if you do work at a university, join the NTU because they're the people who fought for that right. Um, you m exactly, yes, indeed. Um, Union forever. Uh, there is also the CPSU uh, who <clears throat> are weak as piss. Um, so you know, if you are at a university, you've got a choice of two of them. They will try to tell you that you should be in the CPSU um, because you're professional services. You don't need to be. You can be in the good union. Um, just a bit of knowledge there. I, I should say, disclaimer, my sister actually works for the NTU. Um, but if you, if, if you are ever in a fight with your boss, you want my sister on your team, I'm telling you. She is terrifying. Anyway, um, so sorry, I jumped past the, the slide. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the main thing that I've learned in the last couple of months and the main thing that I want to share with everyone else is that idea of sharing your knowledge. It's been said a couple of times already by um, a couple of our speakers today, and I really do think um, it is what makes this community and this um, this job really, really fun uh, is how, how much people are willing to share with each other. And of course, people have mentioned the Mac Admin Slack channel. I will mention it again. It's fantastic. If you're not in there, get in there, um, join up, and say hello. There is the main channel, the main feed moves so goddamn quickly uh, that it's impossible. But there is an ANZ feed, which is lovely and full of nice people. Um, and so that one, that still moves far too fast. Oh yeah, Brains is also in there. Um, that moves way too fast. You can't keep up with that on a regular basis either, but it's a really great place to just, you know, bounce ideas off. Um, and you know, <laughs> as we said, like, uh, people have always shared information in this community. It's great. It's, again, why I can do this job, because everyone here knows way more than I do. And so I lean on you guys, so I need you to do this for me, okay? Um, but yeah, like, I mean, just as an example, here is, here is a little script uh, that I've worked on in the last week. Check this out. And that's good to deploy. Um, <laughs> That, I'm glad that joke got a laugh, because 
he actually doesn't put his name in any of his scripts, so I actually I had to write it in and then remove it. So, <laughs> but yeah, what a lovely guy. Um, and you know, that's about probably, <laughs> that's, that's more of my job, my day-to-day -day job than I care to admit. Um, but, you know, we have this idea, and I, I think, you know, God bless Rich, he, he always figures out everything before any, anyone else and is always updating um, his, his scripts and his blog and everything else. And, and you know, I, I had this idea that I'd do the same thing. Um, and so when I, when I moved to Swinburne, I, you know, I cleaned up my blog and made it look a little bit nicer. And, and I thought, yeah, man, like, whenever I, I find a really hard problem, I'm going to blog about it. Um, and this is the one entry I've done all year. Because blogging's a pain in the ass. Um, I don't know how Rich does it. Like, it's, it's really annoying. Um, and I say that as someone who gets paid to write um, for the paper. But, you know, I think the difference there is they pay me. And if I don't do it, I get very angry emails and calls. Um, but no one cares if I update my blog, so my blog never gets updated. Um, and I also kind of think, like, well, first of all, obviously, I'm no Rich Trun. Like, the, the crap that I've come up with, the, the silly little hacks that I've done in my environment, I'm too embarrassed to share, like, publicly. <laughs> like, they're all so ugly. Um, you know, he, he does these beautiful, elegant little scripts that's like three lines of something that just, you know, will fix an entire lab. I spend three weeks on something that is just hacky and ugly and, and just, you know, anyone who looked at it would have that reaction of, like, what the hell is that? Um, and... But I have actually shared, say, for instance, there was uh, an issue with Xcode uh, in our labs. And it was basically just packaging it for the start of the year. And Xcode, I'm sure if you've worked in education, you know that Xcode is not the nicest thing in the world to package. Um, mainly because it's, you know, you've got like 12 gig of SDKs that you have to kind of whack in a student's um, profile. and. Uh, so you don't want the students to take 10 minutes to log into their machine, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff, and Xcode doesn't, uh, Xcode, not Xworld, Xcode doesn't like it when you move things. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, it's a, it's a, very, it's a total pain. Um, and I got it working, and it was really, uh, like, the, it, didn't, it um, didn't affect login times at all from, for our students. Um, and so I was very, very happy with that, but it was so ugly, and it was so, so hacky. Um, but people did ask me for it when I, when I finally kind of, um, you know, jumped into the, the Mac admin slack and I was like, holy crap, I fixed it, I figured it out. Um, and I ended up sharing it with a bunch of people who saw that. Um, and they all ag agreed that it was ugly and hacky, but they all implemented it too because it worked. Um, and so I kind of wish that there was some kind of way of doing... Uh, I guess what I'd call like a, um, a, a secondment that is external. You know, it's so fantastic to be able to go into someone else's organization for a couple of weeks and just see how their setup is and, and play around with it. Um, you know, I've got a mate, uh, James, who works for a startup uh, down in Melbourne. He wanted to be here today. He was supposed to speak, um, but he's just had a little baby who's not as cute as mine. But um, he, he, so he couldn't, he couldn't be here. But anyway, he works for a startup. Um, I would love to switch jobs with him just for a week. Um, you know, I'd love to wander in at 11, which I assume he does, um, and then just push out the Mojave beta to all my users so they could check out the cool new dark mode. And then uh, play ping pong and like drink craft beer in the afternoon and go home. That sounds awesome, which I assume is what he does through his day-to-day -day job, because literally that is his ping pong table, and that is his craft beer fridge that is in his startup office. I don't get that at Swinburne. Um, but there, yeah, and then he could go to Swinburne and sit in a cab meeting and, and write paperwork about a minor change to the JSS that he wants to do in six weeks. It'd be a nice, nice little way to kind of go through that. But anyway, um, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so instead, we kind of need to just chat amongst ourselves. And yep, um, and I was chatting with uh, Elliot from Latrobe. If he is here, where is he? No, maybe. Hopefully not. Anyway, um, my eyes are broken. So um, I was chatting with him yesterday, and and we were talking about kind of the labs uh, at our various environments. And I said, well, um, I'm. Uh, our labs are also running 12, 10, 12, 6. And semester two is starting in about three weeks. 
and we're not re-imaging them and we're not sticking 1013 on them. Um, and as I was telling him this, I immediately felt so ashamed. I, uh, I was like, oh God, like, uh, this is my first like semester, my first proper semester in a role and I'm not even getting to the, not even the latest, well, I mean, I guess the, the, the official latest thing, because uh, I'm just not ready, um, that's terrible. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, we're doing the same. Yeah, 1013 has been a pain in the ass. And I was like, oh, excellent, excellent. I'm not alone in this decision. Um, and just even that, that one little conversation just made me feel so much better about my skill in my role and, and where we all are as a community. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really excited. I am actually really, really excited to roll out 1014 because I do think it is 1013 plus. Um, and, and, you know, in, my, in the ways that I've played with it, I do think that Apple have actually finally kind of looked at bugs and, and squashed some bugs. But anyway, so yeah, so I immediately felt much better at, about that decision. I felt like I wasn't, you know, taking the easy way out for semester two, that that was actually a sensible decision to make. And I think, you know, I wish there was more of that. I wish there was more of those discussions between our organizations about what we were doing and why we were doing it. Um, and I think we could learn a lot from the academics that are our customers um, because they've been doing this for years. You know, academics constantly form little groups amongst universities where they will, you know, work on a project. I mean, one of the reasons why HS, uh, HIV is not something that is super terrifying anymore is because a whole bunch of universities got together and tackled the, project, uh, the problem together. Um, you know, so I can only imagine like what we could pull off if we kind of combined forces as well. And by the way, that mo movie has not aged well. So let's move to this one instead. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when we collaborate, I mean, that's why we have things like Edge of Rome. That's why we have things like Arnet. I mean, realistically, that's why we had the internet to begin with, because universities needed a way to, to collaborate. So yeah, if we took that kind of example from the academics, um, I think we could uh, do some really, really cool stuff. And, you know, one thing I would love to do, um, I don't know how uh, much security teams would, would find this cool, but I would love to have like a buddy system. I don't, anyone know the line from that one? Anyone? This is Unix. I know, this is Unix, yes. Greatest line ever. Um, uh, yeah. If we, you know, I, I'd love to kind of form a buddy system where, you know, say if you're uh, an organization with this many Macs, buddy up with a friend who has a similar sized organization, similar sized kind of issues that you're having, and give each other read access to some things that you feel you can give them read access to so that you can see how each other are tackling the same problems that you're facing every day. Um, I don't, again, I don't realistically think that's probably going to happen, but I do like the idea. Another idea I really, really like, um, and it's, it's actually started from my old boss, uh, Cameron, the grumpy guy who you've heard yell out throughout the, the last two days. Um, <laughs> lovely guy, glad I don't work with him anymore, but um, <laughs> he's formed um, a Mac admins group um, for uh, Mac admins who specifically work in Australian and New Zealand universities. Um, and you might be thinking, actually, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but right now, it's a, it's, it's a private channel um, in Slack at the moment. That's all it is right now. Um, but I think it's got the potential to be a really, really cool community. Um, and, you know, un universities uh, do have really specific and unique challenges. Most of us have pretty limited budgets. We have labs that could be spread over multiple campuses. Even if we're on just the one campus, sometimes our campuses are so goddamn huge, like UNSW would take 15 minutes to walk from one end of the campus to the other. Um, and yeah, like just going back to that Xcode example, um, you know, we always had those, those issues where deploying Xcode to an end user, that's a piece of piss. Like it's, you just throw it at VPP, off it goes, right? But deploying it to a lab full of students who aren't admins who have very small user accounts, that's tricky. Um, so there are these constant things that kind of pop up in a university environment uh, that we need to deal with. Um, and I think, it, yeah, the, the more we can kind of get together and discuss these things, the more 
we'll all kind of learn from that. Um, so yeah, the, the plan for this little Mac group is to meet up um, online mainly, but also in person when we can, um, and discuss our issues and also kind of form a bit of a, uh, I guess a caucus um, of, of ways of kind of approaching uh, support, of putting in, um, you know, filing radars uh, about the issues that affect us specifically. And I, I know one thing I've been told from one person who would know these things is he, he was ex explaining to me that when you put through a radar um, about a bug that you found in, in the latest beta version of Mac OS, make sure you include how many Macs you support and then how many users those Macs end up getting used by. If you've got 50,000 students, you know, put that in your ticket um, because that'll make sure that that ticket gets seen by a lot more people, um, as it should. So, yeah, in, in just, there's like eight people in this private channel at the moment. Um, and between the, these eight people, we have 15,000 Macs, and 5,000 of those are in labs with multiple users um, having to use them. So, you know, I think that's phenomenal. And if we take uh, Eric's advice from the other day, um, we can either figure it all out together and share what we've learned, or we can figure out what doesn't work and complain about it to the, the people who could actually fix it. So, like I said, there's always strength in numbers. So I think it's really important that um, in, in this, particular, uh, uh, this particular area, we, we do form together. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, isn't that what the AUC is? Um, and it's not. It honestly isn't trying to challenge the AUC in any way. The AU AUC, uh, who are the people who have put on this uh, event, they're a public organization. They do public events, public conferences. They help students um, uh, get to WWDC, a whole bunch of really fantastic things like that. This is not in any way trying to uh, replace that. This is a group that is private by design. And the reason it's private by design is it's so we can get discussions from companies that prefer to be private. And I can't even say who that company might be, but you can probably guess. You've probably used some of their software or hardware in the past. Um, but they would like to be part of a private group, and they don't want to be part of a public discussion. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why this is private. Um, so, yeah, if you are in a university and you would like to be involved, um, I would highly recommend um, that you come along. Uh, you could teach us something, I'm sure. Uh, if you want to join, um, that's my name on both uh, Slack and Twitter. Um, hit me up on either one um, and we'll definitely uh, get you into the mix and, um, and we'll start organizing um, at least our first uh, kind of online uh, discussion very, very soon. Um, and then, yeah. Who knows after that? And as a final thing, once again, bloody hell, join the, join the union. Um, we have a very strong union in, uh, in the uh, education sector, which is one of the reasons we have, say, 17% super. That's awesome. I almost said something else. That's awesome. Make sure you join your union. And because Tony asked for it, here is the world's cutest baby enjoying her very first pillow fight last night with her grandpa. So isn't that adorable? Thank you.